Good morning, Trump Topia. Are you awake yet? Or have you been slapping the snooze button? GMT is a special segment of the Almost Daily Zencast. ADZ is a special production of Collaborative Theater Artist Group Studio, an imaginary production company that I run in my head. Hello and namaste, dear friends and fellow travelers through time and space. I am your favorite radio talk show personality co-host, without a co-host, the incorrigible Mr. Zeppo. Always on the lookout for that local, lively, engaging, fascinating, uh, spiritual, and, uh, you know, satirical human being that's down to collaborate totally for free uh, to uh, be an actual living, talking co-host and or special occasional guest participant in this crazy project known as the Almost Daily Zencast, podcast of podcast shows. Uh, If you are in the Southern California area, or technologically savvy enough to handle the, the minimal number of hoops that must be jumped through in order for us to remotely collaborate, then hit me up. Uh, I get a lot of junk mail, so forgive me if I don't respond super quick, but I try my best. Serious inquiries only. Looking for actual uh, curious and clever cats that can talk in dialogue, you know, with conversational skills and whatnot. Been on the lookout for three years. So far, mild curiosity and zero takers. So the show remains absurdly silly in its that it's just me talking to myself and you listening. But thanks for listening, folks. Forever, my endless gratitude to all, like, I think there must be a grand total of maybe 200 and some odd folks out there from all over the world that actually seem to like listening to the show. And for that, I humbly thank you. And now, friends, it's time to turn our attention to whatever the hell it is I meant to talk about when I first sat down to do this thing this morning and then completely forgot. It was just four minutes and 20 seconds on the dot when I thought about that. Um, And... uh, Here's a little bit of mood music. That opening track was called Wood 101 Remix Cinematic Heights. DJ Z starting over volume one. Uh, this next piece is uh, Funky Sessions 3. Funky Nights, Blue Mornings. DJ Z starting over volume two.
people might ask, what the hell is this podcast show all about? And as today's blurb says, it is uh, all about my authentic, real, and uh, undeniably slightly unorthodox opinions as opined, which is a real word. It is a conjugation of opinion. The act of sharing one's opinion is to be opining. I have once opined upon the subject, he said mysteriously. Um, as opined by my own creation, the literary fictional, the fictional literary character known as the incorrigible Mr. Zeppo, about the very real and bizarre current events of our absurdly cartoon-like reality. Welcome to 2020. It is today, uh, Thursday, October 22nd. What? It's Thursday. I thought it was Wednesday today. I am clearly uh, not paying very much attention to the calendar in terms of immediate day-to-day -day activity. As I have shared recently in real life at Real People, 2020 has been a blur pretty much since May for me personally, which is why I, in a sort of tiny rebellious type of sort of pseudo-ritualistic, rebellious act of non-compliance have kept my wall calendar stuck on May. I should have been tearing the pages off because it's what? October? <laughs> but I haven't been because I'm a rebel. That's me, folks. Okay, so what's going on in the world today? Oh, I wanted today's, today's episode, I wanted to tie a few things together, right? I recently quite uh, elaborately opined on my sensibilities around the ideas of free speech. Perhaps I was too subtle. Free speech does not include the incitement of violence, the planning of violence, the masturbatory wishing for violence. And the beef I've got dear friends and fellow human beings. And it's it's a kind, compassionate, I understand where you're coming from, but I'm still going to approach you with some tough love, disagreement kind of beef. And that's with everybody that's jerking off to the idea of violence on the streets as the only reasonable, logical, functional, viable option left to us in order to solve the myriad of slightly redundantly moronic problems that we ourselves created for ourselves. Uh, so, but who am I? How dare I pontificate? Another fun word for sharing one's opinion. Um, pontificate so patently, uh, oh, can't find another word that begins with your fabulous letter P. Uh, people might be confused is where I'm going here. Let me awkwardly transition into this note that I wrote to myself. Probably more than a week ago now. When was it? Apparently this is created September 28th. It's not quite, yeah, yeah. Not too long. It wasn't a year ago. 2020. It was updated October 19th. So, within, within the week. And I'm now going to, like, improvise a transitional opening into this idea. This blurb that I captured. That I wanted to share. On the show. With you. Yes, folks. Whoever you are out there in interwebs land, listening through your ear holes to the rambling, goofy thoughts of this 
bizarre, absurdist, non-existent fictional character of truth. For I am, I stand for truth in a comic book, you know, I ain't real kind of way. I digress. Uh... My jumping off point, duality, non-duality. Raise your hand if you have no idea what that, what that phrase means. It's okay. You're in a safe space. There's no judgment here. If you've never heard those two terms, forgive me. But you're going to have to do a little bit of homework and kind of do, do the deep dive yourself into grasping the many ways that those two concepts are applied to, to our world. Because the surface 20-second recap just ain't enough. And I, I may be mistaken, but put a, put a big red pin up on your mental uh, red pin board of thematic uh, Venn diagram of something. Whatever. I haven't really officially titled this yet. Or if I have, I don't remember what it is. Um, but somewhere... In the ever-growing heap of not all of my episodes, but already way too many episodes for any one person to give a shit listening to on any given day, there's an episode or two, maybe three, where I talk about some of this stuff in depth. So hopefully you'll come around finding it and it'll, you know, all the right synapses will fire. Um, <clears throat> duality and non-duality. First things first, that we got to get clear about them. And this is my humble opinion. Plenty of people might disagree. Plenty, you know, everyone has the freedom to disagree and they might totally disagree. Uh, but I stand by it based on my history of experience and or deep thinking and or deep reading about it. But these things, they are not mutually exclusive. So bypassing a big deep dive and a long sidebar into a contextualized meaning of duality, non-duality, I want to add to all of that background that you would pull for yourself, having done your homework, the added notion that I don't see very much out there in some of those source materials. There's either the explicit declaration that they are mutually exclusive that is sort of embedded in all that content, or uh, some reference to the debate about whether or not they might be mutually exclusive with the bias trending towards they probably are, or no reference to it at all. And not a lot of people out there kind of reminding the world that they indeed are not mutually exclusive. Duality and non-duality, in fact, are living embodiments of what you might call an oxymoron. No longer a trending popular term, because it just got turned into a... Some people tried to turn it into a, a dismissive, you know, sort of disrespectful term, and it just didn't go anywhere. Um, but uh, they are co-creating each other in a co-creative dichotomy. Most people might be familiar with the term um, false dichotomy. And that's when we try to imply a non-existent relationship to things that may appear to be opposites, something along those lines. Uh, but people forget or are unaware of the fact that there are other forms, that if there's a, if there's a false dichotomy, in order for that to make sense and function and be true in the world, there must naturally be true dichotomies. Up and down, left and right, yin and yang. They're paired together by the word and in their names because they are inseparable. Can you rip up away from down so that they are no longer originating from the same center? Or left from right? Can you isolate left so that only left can be observed and experienced and right is precluded? Of course not. Nonsense talk. 
to that end. Why am I rambling about that? I posit that because I think that the the non-mutually exclusive nature, the non-exclusivity, mutually speaking, of these two things is significant and impactful at a metaphysical place regarding metaphysical things, um, at a at a quantum physical place regarding sort of, you know, both Newtonian and quantum field physics kind of way, and in more mundane levels, because it's all one big giant fractal, right? So all the different levels will have their synergistic fractal recursion, like hologram effect. Uh, and I do not mean that it is fake or a computer simulation. Put a pin in that. I've already explained that multiple times over. Uh, so you'll find that sprinkled throughout episodes. Uh, but if you're new, you'd be like, what? Simulations? What is it? Where is it? Ah! It all comes around and reconnects. Don't worry. That's why I like flow past it sometime. Because I know I've already stopped and explained myself at other times. Um, I would propose to you, my friends, to get back on track with the primary through line, that we can have mutually exclusive... I mean, we need to respect the the idea that things we might presume as mutually exclusive might in reality not function that way. They might not function as mutually exclusive par uh, paradoxes or, you know, uh, antitheses, antithesi to each other. And here's where we get to what we want to talk about today on Good Morning Trumptopia. The political parody, uh, uh, and what's the other word? I forget. But um, my position, politically speaking, as a talking head in the interweb of, of media options for you, as an opiner of opinions, uh, attempting to... Uh, be heard globally on the stage, the global public stage of civil discourse. I propose to you, dear friends, that we can honor and and understand and respect and operate with that non mutual exclusivity in politics, as well as other mundane areas. Uh, but specifically for politics, I I dipped into that long rambling preamble to to prepare you for the for the simple fact that some people find alarming the the alarm the potentially alarming fact that I simultaneously position myself as and I don't like the term anti statist anymore. I don't like any labeling because labeling leads to uh, dogma and ideology. And those two things, labeling also leads towards um, the stratification of leadership and followers, right? Or uh, leadership and base. Common parlance politique. Uh So we get we if we adhere if we cling to anti-status as a label a the same problems will arise right and b you might get listed on a list and monitored so I want to be really clear I am not especially in the following terms I am not anti-government now plenty of people out there are plenty of Americans who love this country and I'm not criticizing here I'm not judging and I'm not morally ciphering or or sorting in anyone by in any way i'm just calling out the apparent trends in you know in the patterns of things that i see plenty of people that live in america and that love america want to go beyond the right-wing idea of small government and really sort of just radically despise all 
conceptualization of government. Uh, I don't fall into that bucket. I want to be clear about that. And I also have um, absolutely zero, zero uh, negative or, mm, or quote-unquote bad uh, intentions towards any of the institutions or any of the people who operate within those institutions of the system of our government as it is. I thread a different needle, folks. Uh, to that end, I think it is reasonable for someone like myself to take the nuanced position of saying, A, I'm definitely vote Trump out. I was definitely against electing Trump in the first place. Right out there publicly saying, bad idea, let's not do that. But if we do let that happen, because I don't think that voting is absolutely meaningless, the way some people do, right? And I'm not judging those who do. I'm saying, A, we've got to find out if it really is a completely, um, thoroughly, dare I use the term, absolutistly corrupt, hijacked, and meaningless device of illusion and management and, you know, like population control, which some out, some thinkers, some speakers out there, even encroaching um, eminently into the middle ground of mainstream dialogue, are trying to posit that it is. Now, curiously, if it is so absolutely meaningless, why does a certain variety of politician tend towards making a lot of effort, putting, investing a lot of effort and action towards preventing or discouraging or um, intimidating their preferred, otherified, vilified, oppositionified opponents slash enemies from within our own population um, away from voting. Why is that? Why is so much time and energy invested by so many people in trying to dissuade us from voting? And why is so much time and energy and effort invested into trying to convince us into voting as if it were a really lame, square, nerdy, unpopular opinion that the cool kids simply just don't think is worth doing? Right? Those two things are very, very real in our system as it is. Flaws and warts and virtuous things and all taken together. So here's my com confusing dichotomous. I support neither political party. Right? And I, I've posted this. I try to be clear about this because people on the social media who don't have a full in-depth comprehension of where I am actually standing, where my worldview action, actually, both actually and, and uh, well, whatever. I, I thought I was going to turn a phrase there, but I, I lost it. Um, so both literally and figuratively, to use a phrase I think I may have coined, um, although that may have been around for quite some time. It's kind of an obvious phrasing. Uh, both literally and figuratively, my worldview is specific and generally speaking relative to most of the rest of my neighboring participants in this grand experiment americana uh ex no i wanted to make that sound more latin than, and i failed but uh but we'll just keep rolling uh and if you don't understand my worldview and position then some of my declarative actions may or may not make sense. I simultaneously reserve the free speech right to criticize any politician in seats of power. I prefer primarily to focus on presidential power because I, I prefer personally to engage with, in terms of how I share my thoughts in the public sphere of global discourse in terms of institutional function, right? 
the people in the seats of power, in my opinion, although Trump is definitely one of those like examples that really pushes the rules to the breaking point, if not totally snaps them in half. But generally speaking, I have been of the of the kind I've been of the school of thought that lays down as a foundation the idea that generally speaking, it kind of doesn't matter who's in office. What matters is um, how that office is being used. Now, there tends to be trends associated with given parties. And we exist in a system that is trying to shrivel off the encumbering and inconvenient and sometimes confusing appendage of third parties and trying to like shrivel that away slowly and get people to sort of forget that that even exists. And therein lies all of the third party frustration. Everyone trying to keep third parties going and keep them growing is getting really sort of sidelined right now. Uh, but I digress. I am not blindly outraged at Trump. I am not a Johnny come lately to political critique. And I am not a Johnny come lately to disliking Donald Trump either. I have disliked him for a very long time. Uh, and we can get into those reasons, right? And when I say dislike, I don't mean a blood-boiling, raving, seething, foaming-in-the-mouth rage. Some people get to that place about these political individuals. I try really hard not to, and I don't think I let myself get anywhere near that. Um, and I try to come at it from a... I, if I disagree with someone or dislike their position or their political outlook, I try to prevent that from devolving or sliding down the slippery slope of personal moral judgment. Because that's an ego trap. That's really more about corrupting yourself than it is about fixing any of the problems you're projecting onto your opponent, right? Because while I am a non-supporter, here's where I get dichotomous. I'm a non-supporter of either party. I want Donald Trump to most certainly, most clearly, most undeniably fail to install himself into a second and then possibly third or fourth term of office. Do I love Joe Biden? Nah. Do I hate Joe Biden? Nah. Is he possibly just like most other politicians, left or right, flawed, lumpy with some known and potentially other deeper, lesser known, maybe even hidden flaws? Yeah. Because guess what, folks? Setting aside whatever trendy conspiracy theory you might have about politicians, and barring the unlikely and very improbable event that they actually are robots or they are actually lizard people wearing human skin suits, um, both of which are extremely low in the probability realm. You want to talk about funny uses of statistical probability? We are There's this whole sh flip floppily shim shamily use of like probability of, get, of being something, right? Uh, especially around corona right now. But like the odds... You are more likely to die of COVID-19 than you are likely to be eaten by a lizard person that's wearing a skin suit and is a politician. Okay? If I'm wrong, God bless it, may T-Rex Jesus show up to save us all. Uh, right? Because that would be the right Jesus that we would need to invoke. We would need, like, Tyrannosaurus Rex Jesus. I think Tyrannosaurus Jesus. There it is. We don't need Rex anymore because, ah, fun fact, 
Yeshua, Rexios, whatever the hell the last bit was. Like he already has Rex in his in his litany of of fun nicknames. Jesus does, because Rex means king, and he was mocked for being king of the Jews, which he was not, because he was uh, actually a practicing um, uh, member of the of the uh, what was the name? The Nacines from Nazarene, right? He was a practicing Nazarenean. I don't know how the, the right like technical conjugation of all those words would be, but he was not a modern day Jew, as it were. Uh, but that's a whole other nuanced place of argument, which might trigger people in the wrong direction. I digress. Uh, really quick pit stop on the idea of all the Jesuses for like all the different kinds of mental constructs that we've come up with Jesus. I am this kind of crazy esoteric thinker. We live in a universe where if you invest belief, mental belief, emotional, intellectual belief in an idea, the universe tries to make it real. So if you believe in Nazi Jesus that lives on the moon, what the fuck are you wasting those votes for, man? Who needs that? Okay. Back on, on track. I have my nuanced opinion. I simultaneously want Trump voted out, out of office. And yes, I kind of, based on everyone that I've been able to, to sink my very limited attention span into, let Joe Biden be the one that takes it. <clears throat> Who else is gonna? Is Joe Jorgensen gonna do it? Not this round. No offense, third party fans. She, I, although she broke through the third party brick wall of getting onto the ticket in all 50 states, and she totally did. I guess if there was ever a year for a third party candidate to like break through out of surprise and steal a, a, an election, it might, it might as well have, could have been this year, right? But I'm not here to tell you who to vote for. I'm just here to encourage you to flood the system with your vote. And I don't mean cheat, and vote more than once. I just mean, if you haven't voted, vote. If you think voting's a joke, vote anyways. But vote smart. And if you agree with all of us who want Trump to be gone from political uh, machinations, because political machinations are already corrupt and retarded enough. Sorry, that word is supposed to not be on the acceptable use list anymore. But, like, let's be real, folks. It's 10 o'clock on a Thursday, and if we were to rewind to uh, this day, and what would it have been? Was it 2016 or 2015? It would have been this day, 2016, right? Because the vote is the year, and then the next year he gets the president gets, goes in. So <clears throat> if we rewind to this day, Moments before the the timeline branch splintering moment when Trump got the nomination and 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 rode it all the way into the office, I would be sitting here if I had my podcast show up and running and established at that point, which I do not believe I did. Well, or did I? I don't remember. But if I was already like nationally, you know, established and listened to, I would be sitting here on the airwaves of interwebs telling you like politics is fucked up. And I assure you this cartoon character reality TV show jerk off of a scam artist and lecher and sexual predator and those aren't wild accusations, right? Those are evidence-based um, determinations of raw, clearly exemplified flaws that this man truly, truly cannot pretend to be free of. Like, just, but continues to do so. 
I'll be telling you right now, folks, um, A, it doesn't really matter who you put in office. Because whether they were pure of heart when they first got started or not, the system, which is not exclusively evil, but the system as it operates, has enough burden of corruption and, you know, working, flowing within it, independent of any given party, that that corruption ultimately seeps in and hijacks the human individual at an intellectual, spiritual, esoteric, energetic, and physical level. And that this is the real system of oppression. Whenever in the last three years of my show, and when I, and even and in the fictional world, like this has always been true too. Like if I've been on the show for a thousand years, I will have always spoken in these terms because I think, I think it's the thing that's true, and sort of the key thing that we get the most distracted away from. The real system of oppression is that energetic cancer, that esoteric level crud that is creeping and growing along the internal spiritual network of the human species. So I can radically refuse to give my financial intellectual, mental, physical effort and spiritual energetic support to either party while still simultaneously endorsing, encouraging, and giving my mental, energetic, physical, spiritual support and endorsement to the populace, the electorate, and their their duty, their civic duty of of engaging with and participating in and holding that system accountable, if that makes sense. And I can sit back and go, uh, we have deeper work than just voting to do, while simultaneously. Because we really do, folks. I can I can say, hey, uh, voting is great. And just because I'm endorsing or giving a thumbs up to or promoting the act of voting does not mean that I'm a status sheeple that does not understand that as it operates in our lifetime, voting is deeply flawed. Just because a thing is deeply flawed does not mean we abandon it and reject it and blindly turn away from it. Arguably, the system wants minimum participation. It most certainly does, dear friends, because the less we participate... the... uh, the easier it is for those of us who do participate to be manipulated. We're going to take a quick mental break with a bit of music. Going to play for you some Disco House 101 Remix. Why Aren't You Dancing? DJ Z, starting over, volume three. Thank you. 
Why weren't you dancing, folks? That's a whole nother rabbit hole, which could be put a pin up on the board. We can do a whole little mini series of exploring the question, why did humanity give up ritual, spiritual dance? I know some folks out there still do it. And that to some modern points of view, that's weird. But if you've ever truly lost yourself in dance, tribal or otherwise, but the more earthy and the more tribally it is, the more, the more powerful the phenomena can get. If you've ever really truly lost yourself in dance, especially surrounded by others in a group, under the moon, you might, you might easily understand that that sort of thing is good for you. It's good for your body. It's good for your mind. It's good for your soul. Why did we ostracize it, marginalize it, ridiculize it, make it something way over there? I don't know. We'll come back to that question someday uh, and put our thinking caps on and talk through it. Back to this. So previously, I was saying the two things... I hold two positions I hold as part of my larger worldview might seem a bit hypocritical because they to normal normalized sort of middle of the road mainstream political thinking they might seem mutually destructive uh, but I want everyone to vote and I refuse to give my support to any given party politically I will not send my money, nor my likes, nor my uh, endorsement to any given political party. I will talk about and address what I perceive, good and or bad, about all political parties and ground my comments on the following sort of background context. It is my earnest mental conclusion, like I'm seriously thought about this, folks. It is my serious, earnest, legitimate, like, concern publicly that isms, for better or worse, by design or by coincidence, through some function of the way we invest mental, emotional, kinetic, spiritual energy in them, very quickly, very often, and almost inevitably, get a little twisted, get a little hijacked, get some hooks in them, no matter how earnest or sincere or um, beautiful or about liberation they may be in the beginning. Eventually, if it is corruptible, it can and might very well be corrupted by whatever uh, is out there that might be doing all the corruption. Uh, right? And here's my real life proof example. Buddhism is a practice that rejects ideological constructs. And yet, in 2020, there is a Buddhist totalitarian fear-mongering uh, religiously violent Buddhist state riddled with corruption exercising oppressive uh, violent tactics against its own people and especially against those chosen others that have been otherified and vilified and made to be evil so if it can happen to Buddhism if the corruption can get to that point with the spiritual practice of self-liberation through meditation of political ideology. Do you see the, the Catch-22? Buddhism is literally setting your little imaginary mental bird free 
from the ideological gilded cage that it thinks it is is its home and letting it go be alive in its more organic setting. Those gilded cages in our mind are built by our own words and our own mutual indoctrination of those around us and each other and our children of, you know, trying to perpetuate these chosen, glorified, word-built ideological isms, these dogmas. And that in the law, in a, on a long, to borrow from Fight Club, to borrow and adapt some dialogue from Fight Club, on a long enough timeline, everyone's number drops to zero. Everyone's ideology becomes a totalitarian ism, mental cage, mind manipulating tool. They did it to Buddhism for fuck's sake. Right? And and that's deeply painful for me to articulate because I am of the inclination, meaningfully, personally, uh, not because of blind faith belief, but because of direct phenomenological experience. I'm the kind of person that's like, meditation and the earnest self-liberation of our individual minds from all ideological constructs is the spiritual healing transformative solution that the human species needs and that our own human ego has distracted us from. In my opinion, that assessment clarifies the state of the world quite brilliantly and points in the correct direction should anyone care to figure out how to solve it. And yet, right? What a mind fuck. Um, so, never mind. Setting Miranmar aside, the tyrannical, violent, uh, Muslim-hating, faux-Buddhist uh, nation-state, And reeling it back into the commentary about my own my own delightful home uh, nation state that I find myself in, right? I simultaneously love this country, formerly known as America, which was grossly inappropriate nickname to take on America. America, America is the entire continent, folks. So for the one little state in the middle, for the one ginormous nation state in the middle to call itself the entire continent is a little bit rude to everybody else involved. I can love this country and, and piss in its eye at the same time. That's not true. That's, that's, a, that's several yards beyond the line, beyond the pale. I can love this country and humorously, lovingly, uh, satirically, um, using the creative license of all the terms that apply here, all the terms of art, from satire to pontific, not pontificating, what's the other one that starts with a P? Uh, lampooning, doesn't start with a P. Lampooning. Um, to poke a little prodding bit of fun at this country that I love, that I live in, and that I want to keep living in, for fuck's sake, and that I want others to love and keep living in, too, without necessarily having to destroy anybody else's country. I technically, and a lot of people will judge me for the following, and I forgive you. And I hope you can forgive me. Otherwise, fuck off. But I technically prefer that Joe Biden win, a historic win, lead America in a blue wave, as it were, not for the political gain that it would garner the left, because I'm neither left nor right, but because we most certainly need like a circuit breaker, reboot the system, relief 
from the hyper maniacal pay, breakneck pace of political absurdity that has been uh, the administration of Donald J. Trump. And I want, I want the blue wave. I want the, not because I'm a Democrat, not because I support that party, but because I, and he, just stick with me on this, okay? Without lending them my, my membership, even, even if I was a full-blown, if someone sponsored, if some, if some hot rich lady came out of the, the mysterious void that is audience, and and proposed marriage and uh, established my my very real legitimate citizenship here because I we fell madly in love for having having you know met each other's minds over the content of my podcast show and the vision of like producing and creating it together and I was suddenly let's say that all happened three years ago or five years ago back during the Obama era and I were. Before you today, right now, a voting uh, eligible citizen, fully fledged, fully paid up. I paid them the extortion money to let me vote. Because that's what that is. No offense. I can be humorous about it, right? Um, But the country that I love is most definitely deeply involved in extorting its own people for as much money as possible. And might also be sliding down the slippery slope of intentionally trying to bankrupt uh, the bottom half of its uh, demographic spectrum of population classes for the purposes of enriching and enwealthing itself at the upper half and um, perpetuating that that wealth gap between the elite, whoever they are, and the rest of us. Because that isn't a flaw in the system. That's sort of the way the system was designed. And if we, the people, are truly about growing, transforming, healing, and building the most perfect, by baby steps, achieving more perfect versions of the union, then we will address that. And we will solve it, not by shooting people in the face with weapons that the evil bastards sold us. Because, dear friends and cosmic family, for every one of you dumb fucking bastards, literally are my brothers and sisters. I don't want to take away your guns. I just want you to realize that the slave owners that have enslaved us are those that sold you the guns. That's how you keep a free man slaved. By letting... And free woman, right? Because I'm not sexist. But that's how you keep a free people enslaved. It's the double whammy of the illusion of self-defense. The illusion of uh, autonomy vis-a-vis tools of violence and murder the illusion of autonomy vis-a-vis the machines of corrupt political governance as opposed to collaborative, civic, actionable governance, right? To give it a different name. Um, And the never-endless profiteering on violence. Which, oh, by the way, wink, wink, nudge, nudge, say no more, say no more, they also instigate at an international and domestic platform so that they can always be certain that somebody is going to need some guns somewhere urgently. I can love this country and I can love this world that we live in and see these deeply flawed, deeply corrupted political systems and believe in the one thing, believe, and I very rarely like to use the word belief. As I've mentioned before, most of the time, 
I like to tell people that belief is something I don't want to believe in, right? Like, I don't want to limit myself. I don't want to hinge everything I do on this strange, duplicitous, and also rather flawed magical power that we have because we don't understand it very clearly. We should really refrain from believing in a lot of things until we have purged ourselves of the nonsense that we cling to through belief. We have healed ourselves of the self-abusive bullshit that we cling to and use belief on to manifest all the toxic shit that we manifest and readdress, re-inform ourselves, realign ourselves, rediscover how to use belief in a holistic, healthy, uplifting, for the greater good, non-corrupt way, as intended, as taught to us by all those that we commonly call the enlightened ones, etc., etc., etc. So don't get hung up on the fact that, yeah, I would much rather see Joe Biden win this next election than anybody else. Here's why. It's not because I love Joe Biden blindly. It's not because he's my preferred political puppet necessarily. It's not because I'm a blind leftist sheeple any more than I'm a blind rightist sheeple. As I was, as I failed to complete the thought earlier, uh, I mentioned on social media all the, all the time to try to give a complete picture for those who might be coming at me and making comments those on the right often assume and project that I am a leftist sheeple, quote-unquote. And those on the left often make the mistake of presuming that I am on the right or some alternative fringe direction and I'm a crazed conspiracy New Age nut job type. And, respectfully, I refuse all of those labels. I reject all of those labels. I think I've processed my thoughts and my experiences deeply enough to know better than to accept or adopt any of those labels. Um, and, quite frankly, uh, in terms of, and I get it, I know all the arguments against it, but I think since we've been stuck in this cycle of voting for the lesser evil for so long, I think we need to turn itself around by looking critically at each of these lesser evils, right? Because plenty of voters voted for Trump think believing him to be a lesser evil than Clinton somehow. And plenty of people are now, currently, because let us not forget, election day is not alone, singular, the day everyone votes. People have been voting. Millions of Americans have already voted, which is kind of awesome. It's kind of mind-blowing. Will we reach the level of saturation that I, I personally would, would have been calling for, have been calling for, would have loved to have been calling for in a much more broader, nationally viewed, nationally consumed platform? I don't know. Um, but I hope... And I hope that the blue party really does win a double plus super majority um, and that 2020 is remembered as this like massive blue wave reactionary bitch slap against what everything against everything and everyone that has enabled and encouraged and abetted aided and abetted this criminal political class puppet that has been in office for the last four years. Not because I want the left to get what it wants necessarily, although a lot of the things they pitch sound great. I want to, I, I want, just like I wanted the Trump base to see Trump fail at doing the things he promised, which he has, although he has achieved many an intriguing thing here and or there, some of which, quite frankly, on the surface, uh, barring any hidden flaws I haven't come across, some of those things I can't really disagree with, right? Minor, de it's a minor thing, and that's always true. 
they always do a few things that they know deep down, whether they acknowledge them or not publicly, the other side, if forced to examine very closely the details of, they actually couldn't loathe and disagree and hate. That, that's always true. They, they work the gambit, as the saying goes. They work the full spectrum of, political puppets always work, work the full spectrum of, this is red meat for my base, and this technically should be red meat for my opposition's base. In my humble opinion. I believe that to be very, very true. In my humble opinion, my fullest, most profoundest reasoning is, I humbly believe, unorthodox and will ultimately, very probably, offend Democrats as much as it will trigger Republicans. And I feel that I've always been anchored in that position and that... Um, I can't apologize for that for to either side, right? Because the whole point is to indicate to everyone caught up inside the political manipulation echo chamber box that there's a larger perspective we can all take while without destroying the system, without burning everything to the ground. <clears throat> and I'm looking at all you guys who are either participating in or sympathizers for this whole uh, extremist extremist trend from Proud Boys to Antifa and everybody in between and or operating on even more fringier extremes on either side. And I'm looking at you with tough love and saying, hey folks, you know you're getting played with, right? You know you're getting played, right? Now, believe it or not, I personally believe it is absolutely and totally possible, dare I say even necessary, to have a truly non-partisan, non-ideological, non-political perspective on politics. And that we can indeed adopt this as a worldview and still be good Americans. Because it's a lie that politics and that inherent fight, that tribalistic, uh, antagonistic, conflictistic, uh, foaming at the mouth, yelling at each other, and fomenting negativity towards each other, that is not a given, and it is not necessary. The political system conditions us to think those ways because when we are caught up in those negative energy building cycles, it is exponentially harder for us to set aside and transcend ideological constructs and do the practices, the, the ongoing infinite hard work that people like the Buddha call or called, because I guess it's technically correct to address it both past tense and present tense, um, self-liberation, right? The acts, plural, the practice, the ongoing habit of self-liberation. And that's why the system as we know it does what it does. It has been my observation that, generally speaking, in broad strokes, without insulting any individuals in any of these political buckets, most people, behaviorally speaking, on all sides of, the, of this American Trumptopian political divide of political divides, these echo chamber of echo chambers, tend to sort of automatically refuse to even contemplate the viability of such a nuanced position as the one I just outlined above. Absolutely, you know, because like, I mean, for sure, it totally does happen. I'm not the first person, I'm not the only person standing 
in this particular zone of the of the overall model or i'm not the only person pointing out this elephant in this room or this door to this box that we're all in right but i'm certainly bringing that idea and that pointing towards the door to the center of of my jam uh and i'm making it part of my brand in large part because it is rare and i I want to connect with others out there who get this, who don't need this position explained to them. And so that A, they know that they're not alone, and B, we can rally around this whole set of ideas and try and build uh, a new political machine that operates in a way that in theory would be more robustly impervious to the standard treadmill corruption tactics that the current system is all mucked about and tangled up with. One of the curiosities of our current social media uh, public discourse environment or climate or uh, zeitgeist is that it's, it's becoming increasingly common in a very tribalistic way for people to adopt, uh, to, to interpret, adopt, accept, take on and entrench themselves in the position of I've got it figured out. I'm not being manipulated. I'm not getting played. But all y'all over there in that group, in that party, in that political tribe, y'all are sheeple and totally getting manipulated and getting played. Some could quite obviously accuse me of sounding a lot like that or of standing in a position like that. Um, although... My caveat is that I, I have under, long understood that no one escapes the bombardment, the system-wide, culture, culturally pervasive bombardment of psychologically manipulative indoctrination content because there's so much more of it than we even give credit to, even in the wildest of, of wild conspiracy theories, believe it or not. Because everything is a kind of conditioning. Language itself wouldn't function if we didn't condition future generations to comprehend the language, generally speaking, as we utilize it, right? As we choose to use it. I digress. One of the sort of hardest pills to swallow realizations that many, that I think a growing, an exponentially growing number of people are going through which might very well be indeed why you, dear listener, are here in this shared space contemplating my absurd political ramblings for a hot minute, um, that people are realizing that we have been so entrenched because of the conditioning that we grew up with, that we have been uh, so ridiculously attached, so personally identified with our assigned or chosen sociopolitical, spiritual, or religious ideological identity, the collection of social constructs that we've consumed or identified with or have been indoctrinated with throughout our diverse life experiences. And for most of us, there's been a period of our lives and Arguably, because of this fact, most people today are still living through the period in their life when they can't really imagine their own world, their own life, without all of those attachments. Because they are uh, an enthusiastic, card-carrying, insert name of party here. Democrat. Republican. Green Party, anarchist, anti-fascist, 
whatever label. Insert your favorite effing label. And the same goes for religious uh, labels, especially, particularly, primarily from organized religions that are old enough and deeply entrenched enough to be as politically, ideologically burdened with this sort of internal, inescapable corruption. Is this corruption absolute and totalitarian? Of course not. If I started randomly throwing stones of accusation at the first randomly selected assortment of members of any of these political groups or any of these religious groups, would I be most probably wrong about any of those given individuals that might randomly get hit with that stone of accusation about corruption or about the, all the flaws that we're discussing? Of course. That's why the teaching let ye who is without sin throw the first stone. Um, not only do we not know who is without the sin, externally speaking, from a broad perspective, we also don't know who is with the sin. And if we assume that everyone is chock full of sin, that statement, that belief is categorically wrong, but is also rude in as much as that it is not just a biased thinking, not just a a judgmental thinking, you know, that is becomes a sort of hateism, right? Akin to uh, any other sort of hate-based thinking, but it is also literally, spiritually, esoterically speaking, a projection of an attempt to manifest blindly, perhaps wildly, perhaps unconsciously, perhaps without intent, without surface-level conscious intent, or maybe with. But those become efforts of projection. Double-edged sword, motherfuckers. We, that's why we need to be more mindfulness-based in how we approach these things that we do. In my opinion. Uh, but I digress. Is it, is it a sin to not realize that about yourself? Of course not. Do we all go through multiple waves of beating our face against that brick wall to learn the lessons? Of course we do. Because A, lessons are not linear. They're spirally and cyclical and lopsided and imperfect, striving towards some ideation of perfection. But that ideation of perfection is flawed and is not the actual thing. Ultimately, though, there's the the ever shining hope that with my, with a mindful approach we the human species as individuals and as a collective can achieve more perfect union more perfect expression more perfect activity more perfect being civic uh, more perfect achievement in our civic organization and that we can, we can heal and transcend the flaws and sins and evils of religious corruption, political corruption, social corruption, individual corruption, collective corruption, etc., etc., etc. I would like to point out that spiritually, spiritually speaking, that invitation to free oneself liberate oneself from the traps and sins of our own undermining and shake all that shit off, which is hard work, takes a lot of effort, and you revisit things because it's a spirally, lumpy circle spiraling and hula-hooping its way towards sacred geometric moment of glory, right? But that's a process, and we are embodied uh, human flesh beings. And as the one meme I posted a while back points out, the, the human flawed flesh being part of us longs to be the pristine, etherical, divine perfection version of us. But that etherical, divine perfection version of us is 
who and what and why we became the flawed flesh being. Because it wants to be the flawed flesh being. Let that sort of catch-22 sit with you in your next meditation. Um, but I assure you, friends, at a, at a like ontological level, look up that word if you don't know what it means. It's a real word. At a metastructural level, at a spiritual process, at a spiritual construct, bones of the machine level, that invitation is a perpetual invitation. It is a door that stands open and obscured in a hidden place. That door is deep within yourself. And to sort of, here's the ironic catch-22 about that secret. Because that door is hidden deep within, it is the door to freedom, right? Like there's a lot of political discussion and theo philosophic discussion about what freedom is but in my opinion at a functional level at an operational level what is the actual act of freedom to look within and discover this door why because to do it you have to you won't find the door if you don't you have to set aside with love and forgiveness and forgiveness and tenderness and care and a sort of Uh, un, you know, um, what's detachment, a sort of like hard love of like severing the tie. You have to put all of those down or else you'll never see it. And simultaneously to find it, to see it is to walk through it and into it. And only you can do it. Only you can achieve self-liberation. And once you once you do turn in and practice that abdication, that abdication of party, abdication of construct, abdication of identity, abdication of uh, belief system, abdication of all of the different constructs and your loyalties to them, which is the hard part, because we love the things we love irrationally. We give loyalty to the things we believe deserved and or required and demanded our loyalty in order to become functioning members of society. And becoming functioning members of society is a catch-22 of being able to achieve success, right? It's really difficult to achieve success in this functional society without becoming functional members of society. And, and this is one of those hard pills to swallow, and doing so is sociopathy, the way we run society. It's a catch-22. Because we need to run society. We invented society for a reason. Because we didn't want to live in the trees anymore. We didn't want to, you know, pick fleas off each other's back and eat them anymore. We wanted to do more bizarre, advanced things. And we've painted ourselves into this corner. And Trump is the result of all of that, right? Going all the way back past uh, that first upright, grunting, hand-sign-throwing, babbling animal that broke free of the tedium of, of whatever being just an animal is, whatever that distinction is, there's an, uh, there was an evolution. Like, boom, from that moment to this moment, man, the, the self-abusive act of not letting ourselves understand ourselves and therefore achieve our own transcendence and enlightenment and awakening as, as, a, as a species, because we sure as fuck haven't. Has, that's what's led to all of this toxicity, in my humble opinion. And I think we need to work the system backwards, right? Uh, I To come full circle, back to the beginning of this episode and, and put a pin in it all and, and wrap it up for, for this morning, 
Um, why do I technically want Biden to win? Uh, despite the fact that I technically do not, like, as an act of protest and political uh, philosophy, I radically decline, I lovingly decline to support either party. And that's got nothing to do with Trump. That, that predates Trump. So don't, don't get it twisted. Don't think that I'm this way because of Trump. Um, I think that if Trump was a, a wake-up call to everybody on the right, either a tough love or you're going to like beat your own face against the wall, kind of whip a dead horse, learn the lesson because it, it's not going to go anywhere and Trump's not going to win, right? Trump's not going to suddenly reveal himself to be St. Bernard. Trump's not going to start glowing and transfigurate into the living embodiment of white-skinned, blue-eyed, blonde-haired Jesus. He's just not. Trump's going to continue being Trump and doing all the things he's always done, which likely, despite being a chosen and managed political puppet, he might very well get to go to jail because he is this generation's Nixon, right? Orange, what, there's a great meme. I haven't reshared it because I loved it, but I also want to make a little bit of like a snarky commentary on it and I haven't quite figured out what that is and how to phrase it. But there's a beautifully like Photoshop merge the face of Richard Nixon and Donald Trump into one Nixonian Donald or one Trumptopian Dick, uh, Richard, that says orange is the new dick, I believe is the caption. Uh, and for better or worse, whether you believe me or not, my personal perspective as an outsider stuck here observing your circus, because it ain't my circus, <laughs> although it is, right? Like I'm stuck here and I inherited it and I, and I believe in participating it with the altruistic, spiritual, magical intention of healing it from the inside out. If we don't do that, and we don't start with ourselves first, then we're not going to get anywhere. Uh, and that's why I think that getting that resounding loss now will be the swift spiritual kick to the head. What is that called? Shakabuku or something? Uh, I always forget the name of the word. Um, let me see if I have it in this notebook. Yeah, Chakabuku. Which, um, sorry for all the ambient noise. Uh, Chakabuku, which whenever I, I first heard it and discovered it in the film, uh, Gross Point Blank. Which, if you take it, if you take that movie together with its much more obscure, and I don't know if it's an intentional sequel, but it feels like a sequel. And I've talked about this before in the show. Uh, I want to come back full circle on that. Put a pin in that. I want to track both of those movies down and watch them together one day and talk about them. But it seems like whoever made those movies might have similarly strongly uh, aligned opinions with my own about war incorporated. War as an industry. Violence. The... The buying and using of guns to butcher one another on purpose for the purposes of the transactional sale of an exponentially increasing number of guns and ammo. That that is a normalized, perfectly accepted backbone of this society might very well, hmm, things that make you go, hmm, might very well be at the root of all our effing problems. Uh, and, that, and that none of these clowns, no offense, Democrat or Republican, ever truly escape the gravitas of that central pillar. And that the only thing that will change that 
in my humble opinion, dear friends, is if we, the people, pause, abdicate in that healthy way, not in a brutal, violent, fighting each other about it, forcing each other way, but in a deep internal healing practice kind of way, and then pick back up the tools that work. That's the key. I'm not demanding that everyone give up everything they have. I don't want to take the guns away from the gun owners. I want everyone who loves guns to take the spiritual healing journey of going to that place of setting everything down so they can see clearly, seeing themselves, their relationship to divinity, their relationship to each other, their relationship to the veil of uh, physical reality, their relationship to the politicians, their relationship to the industries that use us as commodities, and their relationship to the industry that profiteered and fear-mongeredly manipulated them as a collective into obsessively hoarding guns and ultimately using them against their neighbors. That's the line I'm drawing in the sand. I don't want to take anybody's guns away. I just want everyone to realize that the people who sold you the guns, the machine system, the, the system, the system, the arm or branch, the subsidiary of the system of oppression that sold you the guns is also, it's part and parcel of the media indoctrination chorus of arms of the system of oppression that indoctrinates all those who think that shooting other people in the face is the only viable solution to the point of normalizing and accepting international land warfare and sea warfare and or air warfare and gun violence on the street so that every nation has both of those problems instead of every nation has a population that is healing and transcending and transforming itself into something better and more sustainable and greener and more loving and uh, more empowering, et cetera, et cetera. And that is just about that for now. Uh, right? So I guess, oh, uh, I was going point counterpoint. If Trump is a chakabuku for all those on the right and everyone on the right is in some way, shape or form living through a swift spiritual kick to the head and heart that alters your reality forever for the better through transformative healing and that that impending loss that 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 grieving process of losing and confronting the fact that all of the aspirational self masturbatory uh, content about how Trump is the only one that can fix the world and is failing to fix it, that Trump is some chosen one, etc. If all of that is get it gets the the air let out of its tires, this uh, you know the air drops out of its sails. And they've got to confront with the fact that the machine itself that they believed Trump was fighting against never lost control and is now chastising Trump for the out-of-bounds extracurricular criminality that he chose to engage in for funsies and is now going to, you know, give him a slap on the wrist. Because I don't think he's going to like disappear and go to jail for life or anything. But I think he will have to like do his day in court the moment he's no longer in political power. Uh, and I think we're going to have to go through the anxiety, the cathartic process of staring a, a big historical you know, potentiality branch on the on the probability waveform function of this collective national experience will we tolerate irrational gun violence on the streets 
that's dressed up as some attempt at civil war? Or will we hold ourselves together and help each other unite and heal and transform and get over the wedge issue echo chamber manipulation that has become as heightened as it has during this current extremity test of the pendulum swing. And go through that transition into the Biden chapter and whatever happens next, because that will be the pendulum swinging back the other way, right? The system's not going to magically fall apart if Trump loses. I don't think the system's magically going to fall apart if Trump wins. It's just going to jerk off to this fantasy of a Trumptopian empire a little more and then get its equal opposite reaction back in the leftist direction for a while. And that's why I have this nuanced position. I will not be satisfied when the left wins and gets a controlling majority in all the branches of government. That will be not enough for me. No offense. That's why I triggered the Republicans and I offend the Democrats. Because if we just do that and then sit back and think we've done something, we're wrong. Because no offense to all those who still respect and admire Barack Obama, but during those eight years of the Obama administration, the system was still flawed and riddled with corruption and deeply rooted on the central pillar of profiteering on everything, including violence in the shape of organized murder for profit called war on an international stage and civil unrest and like civil rights and all of this protesting and looting which simmers and boils up to gun violence on the streets dressed up as some sort of civil war or, uh, you know, civic violence for the purposes of whatever the fuck. Because the system wants our violence and wants us to live in fear of each other's violence. And, uh, Putting Biden-Harris in office alone will not end that. And we will have to go through some sort of equally disillusioning, equally painful, because uh, the American catharsis has multiple like beats to it, right? And we are, as I, I have, I've curiously played with the titles of my episodes in recent years, uh, as if I'd been on the air forever, for decades, which I haven't. I wish I had. I wish I'd been on the air for decades. Three, since, since I turned. I wish I'd been on the air since I was, you know, 19. That'd be great. Um, the pendulum continues to swing back and forth. And... If I'm not wildly mistaken, if there is, a, 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 like, a, you know, seeds planted and beginning to sprout and grow on the right because of this whole absurdly wild cartoon adventure into an orange-themed extremist right... Um, empire of thinking, if not literal empire of, of statist action, uh, we're going to go through something similar on the left. And that's what I really want. I want the left to, after a couple of years of breather, like I would love a full eight year term of Biden becoming the oldest you know, person to to live out their time in office with a timely, you know, like he he makes it all the th way through the eight years and you know and is remembered uh, whenever he may pass after that, 
and honored for that. And that things get better and that we get that breather and that respite and that we get a, a Kamala Harris or something or someone similar third, like, you know, bump, bumper crop third year uh, in which, and no offense to anyone who's clinging to that side, during that time, or third term rather, of a Democrat in, in, in the presidency, uh, which of course wouldn't be Biden, right? It'd be someone new. Uh, and that's rare. We tend to, we tend to not l let a any given party have three terms in a row. But I would love that. Maybe even a double whammy and get a, a you know, two full eight year, two term Democratic presidents. And I'm not predicting that Kamala Harris will do this because I don't know who it'll be. I, I genuinely don't. But it'll be someone up that alley, someone that might infuriate and drive those who remain clinging because as many political pontiffs have spoken on many uh, of the many talk shows, there is a consensus on the left that some sort of Trumpist thinking will remain. I'm hoping for sort of the undermining of that by by a larger than expected breaking free of the right and temporarily going to the left and then ultimately, uh, like I'm pointing out, a, a left end of the spectrum catharsis after a bit of, of a respite to let the... To let the most of you know, to let most of America recover from the economic pain that they are currently going through, uh, and that that sort of kapow, kapow of people on both sides of the echo chamber realizing those key pivotal realizations. And joining us, whoever we might be, at the transcendental liminal periphery that should take center stage, sort of a transcendental, spiritual, esoterically um, aware and mindfulness-oriented political action party might emerge. I was trying to bring, you know, share this idea and talk about it back in the Obama days. Uh, because ultimately, we need to realize that all our parties need purging. Not, and I don't mean through violence, right? I mean through loving, forgiveness, transformative healing, etc. And I've belabored the point long enough. As always, friends, I humbly thank you for tuning in and, uh, and turning up and, uh, and taking the time to hear me out and contemplate my thoughts. Your reactions, questions, thoughts, commentary, support, and or opposition are more than welcome. Find me on all the social media platforms, on Instagram, at Mr. Zeppo, no periods, no space, just M-R-Z-E-P-P-O, uh, on Facebook, and on other social media places using the similar name, or just search for the almost daily with the word almost in brackets Zencast. Zencast, you know, all one word. Uh, we're just gonna drop the show there like a potato that's not hot any longer. A 
reminder, folks. Being good humans should always come first and foremost before allegiance to party or politician. curious, the act of self-liberation is most easily described as forgiving and breaking up with all of the constructs in your mind. Political ideology, you're a toxic girlfriend or a toxic boyfriend, whichever case may apply. I love you, I forgive you, it's been a wild ride, but I'm breaking up with you. Now please exit my mental space. Create your own personal ritual like that, and then sit in contemplative inner observance. Namaste, motherfuckers. May peace, love, and grooviness blossom in your heart. Thanks for listening. Tell your friends about the show. Bye.